This is the Financially Simple Podcast, a show dedicated to destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. And now, here's your host, pizza-loving, certified financial planner, Justin Goodbread. Welcome to Financially Simple. I'm your host, Justin Goodbread. And today, we're still in the deep dive of marketing with the idea of marketing to grow the value of our company. Just as a refresher, whenever we're dealing with growing the value, we're not talking about growing the top line revenue. Yeah, that happens. More importantly, we're talking about how can we grow the value that somebody else would pay to us for the company. So today, I want to deal with marketing very strategically as it relates to value. And I've titled today's episode, Is Marketing Worth It? Is marketing worth it? Should we even market? Does it matter? Does marketing matter when it comes to the value of the company? So as an illustration, as you know, I typically like to provide an illustration to emphasize the point. I've given this illustration in the past, and I call it the hot dog vendor illustration. And honestly, I don't know where I heard this illustration the first time, but nonetheless, it stuck in my head. It stuck in my head because many times we entrepreneurs, if we don't see immediate value or immediate return, we seem to take a short side of view and say, well, it's really really not worth it. So the story of the hot dog vendor goes similar to this. And again, I don't know where I butchered it, and I'm sure I've augmented it a little bit over time, but nonetheless, it makes sense to me. There was a hot dog vendor in a major metropolis city. Let's call it New Jersey, okay? Major metropolis city, and he had the hot dog cart, And this particular one was a tricycle that he ran the front, had a hot dog box on the back with an umbrella. I mean, you can kind of picture it. You know, if you've ever had those type of hot dogs, they're really good. But this guy, I mean, he'd get up every morning and he'd go to his spot. Now, everybody knew his spot because above him was the interstate. And just right before the off-ramp of the interstate, he had purchased a very strategic billboard which said, greatest hot dogs here. Exit now. And when you would exit, you would come down the ramp, and there he was in his spot. And undoubtedly, every day, the hot dog vendor would show up, and there would be patrons waiting to purchase his delicious hot dog. Now, before I get too far into marketing, do you like hot dogs? I do. I like hot dogs with, like, chili on them. I like onions on them. I like some coleslaw on them, a little bit of mustard. Actually, they call it a West Virginia dog. I don't want to give too many kudos to West Virginia. I got too many friends and clients up there and I like to give them a hard time about them being, you know, one leg longer than the other. That's where they invented the toothbrush, all that fun stuff. I know I love my friends in West Virginia, but they call it a West Virginia dog. It is good. I like a hot dog. So this hot dog vendor is serving a West Virginia dog. Let's just paint it that away. I mean, this thing is massive and it is lip smacking delicious. Well, the story goes, as his business continued to maintain and grow, the recession of 2009 happened. The recession happened. People are out of work. People are nonetheless coming still to buy his hot dogs because we all know a hot dog is not a very pricey item, but people just still lined up. One day, a gentleman asked him, I said, sir, how in the world is your business booming and we're in the greatest recession in modern times? And he goes, well, I didn't know we were in a recession. He never slowed down to think about it. He heard people talking about it, but, you know, it didn't really bother him much. But that night, for some reason, one of his patrons, when he said that, he internalized it. And he went home and he turned the news on and all of a sudden the news was doom and gloom. And he's going, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? We're in a recession. I got to cut back. Very first thing he did was cut his marketing. And he quit paying for the billboard. And before you knew it, he didn't have the patrons there when he showed up. I mean, it's just a hot dog, right? Yeah, he had his loyal people, but not enough to sustain his business, and he was gone. That's marketing. So the question is, is marketing worth it? Well, in the hot dog vendor scenario, yes, it's worth it. Right now, I'm dealing with a couple of entrepreneurial doctors. Entrepreneurial doctors are fun for me because they're typically on the DISC, D-I-S-C. We talked about this in episode 74, the different personality types. Entrepreneurial doctors are typically a high C. They're very meticulous. Well, this is a dentist. Very, very meticulous. They're used to dealing with very small areas, and they're very precise, and they want to know all the details. And as they've been trained, which most doctors are, they have to defend what they're going to do from every different angle if they're challenged by their peers. 
which is a good thing. That's what we want in our medical profession. By the way, a certified financial planner has to do the same thing, just so you know that. We have to be able to defend everything we do because we're fiduciaries. But I have a doctor client. I have several of them, so I'm not pointing out just one in particular. And marketing is a high I trait. And C personalities and I personalities are in opposition to each other. In fact, they often marry each other. (laughs) Opposites attract, right? So a lot of entrepreneur doctors are very good at their traits, but they don't market very well. And oftentimes when I ask why, I hear the question, is it really worth it? And if so, well, how much do I spend on it? How do I quantify it? And do I really need to hire a marketing firm? I mean, after all, they're just going to try to sell me. And do I have to create a budget? It just makes no sense. I just feel like money's flowing out the window. Perhaps that's you. Perhaps you're saying, man, Justin, I am going daylight to dark in my business. My business is driving me crazy. I cannot keep up. I'm the driver. I'm the chauffeur. I'm the toilet cleaner. I'm the CFO. I'm the invoice. I'm the sales. I'm every part of the company is me. Or it's me having to direct those parts of the company. By the way, it's just not a small business. I was talking with a client who has a 70, 75, 80 million dollar a year revenue company and they had the same exact emotions. We all are in the same boat together. And it was, man, Justin, is it really worth it? So I want to answer that question. I want to answer that question. And to explain is marketing worth it? I want to walk through the things that we need to do to prove that marketing is worth it. So I want to walk you through the small process. And this is how I talk to clients. If you're like, well, what's it like to work with Justin? You're getting it today. This is a typical meeting style. It's albeit customized for our particular clients, but nonetheless, it's very similar information. I'm not really holding anything back. There's another story I heard one time. It said an individual went into a plant He was hired by the plant because this manufacturing plant wasn't doing something accurately. He said, okay, I'll come in and fix it, but my fee is $50,000. So he walks into the control room of the plant, and he's sitting there watching everything, and he looks and he says, hey, y'all, flip that switch right there on the top right-hand corner. And they flip the switch, and everything works. And he said, my work here is done. He walks out, and he sends them a bill for $50,000. The owner of the company writes back, and he said, we are not paying you $50,000 for your time. You're only here for an hour. I said, all right. So he invoiced them. $1 $1 for my time, $4,999 for knowing which switch to flip. So that's the thing about financial planning and business planning. So today I'm going to give you some insight into that. So let's dive into how do you know if marketing works? Well, number one, you have to create a marketing budget based on the goals that we've set out. So we started early on talking about strategic planning. We dealt with that in episode 76 through about 80 or so. We dealt with strategic planning. And so we now have goals. The very first thing that we have to do in order to quantify how marketing works is we have to create a budget. Well, that leads me to the question, how much money should we budget? That's a highly, highly argued and debated question. How much money should we budget? Well, the SBA or the Small Business Association recommends about 7 to 8%. That's their broad-based number. Then they dive down a little bit more and they say, well, now some businesses could be more and less. And they say that guidance probably for growing companies should be 12 to 20% and established companies should be 6 to 12%. And whenever they say percent, they're talking about gross revenue, gross revenue, not net revenue, not after we take our income minus our cost of goods and then dealing with our net revenue. No, they're talking about gross revenue. So, are we truly going to spend 5, 6, 7, 8, 20% on marketing? See, one of the problems I see is that whenever I start talking about we need to use 10% of gross revenue for marketing, too many times a business owner says, that's way too much. How am I going to live? And that's the biggest problem when it comes to marketing budgets is that, and I'm going to get on us business owners, myself included, many times, too many times small business owners take too much profit, too much money out of the business for self-consumption. We do. We try to live a luxurious or a lavish lifestyle too fast. And because of that, we end up to our detriment having a business which is not accelerating at the pace it could be. I often say that whenever someone hires a value growth advisor, that a good value growth advisor can show that individual how to increase the value of their company three to five times within a five-year period. So let's say you have a $1 million company. A good value growth advisor can show you within a three to five-year period how to move it from $1 million to $3 to $5 million in value. The very first thing they're going to say is, 
slow down your personal consumption. Because so many times business owners take way too much money out of the company. There's other things that bothers, like tax planning. I'm dealing with that right now year in. I don't have time to get into today's episode, but Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, I've mentioned his name a couple of times on the podcast because he has impacted my personal life in a positive way for business. I heard him the other day say in a statement, he said in an ad hoc, one of his quick snippet videos, he said, you are pulling too much money out of your company. Stop. And he said, you would be surprised. I don't take any money out of Vaynerchuk Media. Instead, I use money off of speaking fees. And to his point, so many people pull too much money out of their company whenever we could be using those dollars that they're using for consumptive purposes and flowing back into marketing. So the question is, how much money should you spend on marketing? I don't know your particular case. I have clients that I say, you know what? We need to be at a 30% gross revenue range. I have other clients that I say, you know what? We only need to be about 2% revenue range. If you follow the SBA rules, let's say it's 78% of gross revenue. Let's just use that as a template to start. Again, talk to your planner, talk to your advisor. Maybe it's more. So what you're going to do is once you have the amount of money that you're going to allocate. So let's say you have a million dollars in revenue in your company. You're going to use 7%. So we're talking about $70,000. If I can do this in my head, $70,000 in revenue, we're going to allocate to marketing. So right off the bat, we're going to realize that some of the marketing that we're going to have to do in our budget could be front heavy. So let's say that you have a website, but it's awful. Well, the website company is going to charge you an upfront fee to get your website fixed. Let's say that you have to create collateral pieces, ebooks, build channels out. That's going to take some upfront money. And so in the budget, we have to make sure that we allocate dollars upfront to get the business ready for a long-term marketing strategy. So just be aware in the marketing budget, we have to set aside some upfront money. Then once the infrastructure is set up, from that point forward is where we start spending 7 to 8% in our example. Or in that point forward is where you spend 30% of your revenue. So the very first thing we have to do to determine is marketing worth it is we have to do a little homework. We have to create a marketing budget and allocate the dollars properly to prepare for us to spend what we call ad spend, to spend the money on a consistent basis to help us move to point two. So point one is create a budget. We still haven't spent anything. We're just creating a budget. You are listening to Financially Simple, destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. Now we're going to spend a little money and we're going to now monitor and measure. Monitor and measure. That's number two. So monitor and measure, this is the point to where we're going to be able to begin to analyze, is marketing worth it? So in the marketing world, they do things called A-B testing. It's where they'll go out and they will create an ad or they'll create a channel or they'll create some sort of venue. And they're going to do two different things with very similar twists to it. And they're going to see, does A yield better results than B or B yield better results than A? So as you begin to do your marketing, then you're going to start monitoring it and you're going to monitoring it through some testing. And then once you know what yields more traffic or eyeballs, then you're able to determine and and hone down into your measuring technique. So when I say eyeballs, if you're in a brick and mortar location, so someone like myself, I need to get people to actually talk to me. So that, that means I have to either get feet through the door or people on the phone. You may be in commerce. You may have a blog like Financially Simple where you receive revenue from various things in that format. If that's the case, then you're going to end up looking for eyeballs on the page. You can actually track that. So you're going to begin to monitor and measure. And then once you monitor and start measuring it, you're going to figure out which action is yielding the best result. Is it A or B? Is this particular marketing strategy that we have, is it yielding the results that we need to have? And I'll get into strategies in just a second. One of the things you want to do in monitoring measure is you want to tag your actions for measurements. So that could be a vanity phone number. Let's say you're doing a banner ad. You may go and create a phone number through Google Voice. And whenever someone calls in that phone number, it rolls over to your primary number. And now you have a tracking matrix. You may use QR codes. You may have custom URLs. We did an ad on Facebook that got a lot of results. And we actually put a custom code in our blog. And we can see how many people hit the blog page and what they did from our Facebook custom URL. 
My warning to you on marketing is this. As you're monitoring and measuring, again, we're really not heavy into it at this point. We're just getting our toe wet. We're kind of stepped into the water a little bit. We're not full on swimming. But marketing is not a quick fix. It's not, I'm going to throw $20,000 at a problem and I'm going to get a $30,000 return tomorrow. Guys, there's sometimes that strategies could take 18 months, 18 months, 24 months before you actually start seeing results. Forget break even, before you actually see results. Depends on what strategies you're after. I was speaking at a conference and I shared a particular graph on the exponential growth of Financially Simple. The first two years, it was like crickets. And then all of a sudden, exponentially, boom, like a rocket ship, we started having tons and tons of traction. Unbelievable. And the reason why I say that is because whenever you're trying to monitor or measure the marketing that you're starting to do, you're starting to do, it may take some time. I see people in the entrepreneur world, the entrepreneur medicine world, where they want to go do a direct mail. They want to spend $5,000, $10,000 on direct mail and expect they're going to get $10,000 back. That's not how that particular medium works. Direct mail doesn't work one off. Sometimes it can, but I think the number is it has to be in front of you four, maybe five times in front of the same person before they commit. So now you're at a $50,000 spend. So what happens too many times is we don't know how to monitor or measure. And that's where your advisors can help you. So after we create the budget, after we begin tipping our feet into the water to monitor and measure, now we're actually going to create a detailed allocation. We're now going to determine exactly how are we going to spend our dollars. I remember the first time I did this in my companies years ago, I built an Excel spreadsheet. And on that Excel spreadsheet, I had every venue that I could possibly use. I had radio, I had print advertising, I had collateral pieces, I had digital video, digital audio, graphic design, websites, social media, direct mailers, email marketing. I mean, you name any type of marketing strategy I had across the board. And I'd already done my testing to realize with our business, the Heritage Investors, my registered investment advisor company, that digital marketing hit the people that I want to work with more so than print advertising. So I began allocating after I did my monitoring measure, I began allocating the dollars to those particular channels. That's your third step in this process. So now what we've done is we've created a budget. We know, okay, we're going to spend 7% as our example. We're going to spend 70000 if we make a million dollars a year revenue on marketing. We're going to spend a little bit of money up front just to get the system going. We may spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 just to get the foundation laid. Okay, we're into this thing a third of the way. So now we spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in marketing, and we've tested out and realized that I'm going to be super easy and say that Facebook ads work the best. But Google ads aren't bad, and we do have people hitting our blog on our website. So those are the areas we're going to go with. Now we are going to start tracking it, and now we're going to start placing our dollars, hard dollars, into this metric. The fourth thing we're going to do after we do the detail allocation is we're going to quantify. We're going to track to see if the dollars we're spending are worth it. So how do you do that? So we call it prospect qualification. Okay, so that could be how many sales did you get from the $10,000 ad spend last month? Now, remember, it may take some time for the funnel to fill up. How many sales did you get? So how much did each sale or customer acquisition cost? I've actually got an auto repair company that we're doing the same thing on right now. I know that customer cost acquisition on that company is 30 cents per customer, but I know that the average price, the average return is like $160 profit per customer. So there's an exponential return on that cost per customer acquisition. Another way you can track it is cost per lead. How many people actually call? How many people actually look at your site? So that's where you go into qualification of customer. And that's what's going to answer your question of, is marketing worth it? See, so many times what happens is we throw dollars at a problem without doing the homework, without going to school, without getting our tuition or our education. We throw money at the problem and say, well, the education didn't work or the marketing didn't work. And that's, friends, that's not the case. See, here's one of the major missing points. And I almost see this in every business I work with. One of the major missing points in marketing is what I call redirect marketing. 
Now, redirect marketing has its own term in the internet world where, like I was looking at fishing poles, we're going to the beach and I want to get my little boy a, a fish, some line for his fishing pole for saltwater purposes. And we were on Bass Pro Shop because we have one of those near our house. And whenever I go on Facebook the next day, I see an ad on from Bass Pro Shop. That's called redirect marketing or retargeting marketing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about whenever someone hits your site, someone walks in your door, how are you capturing that data into your CRM system so that you can do drip conversion later on? See, so many times entrepreneurs, they'll say marketing doesn't work. And I say, no, it's not that. Your systems don't work. You don't have the ability right now for many people to collect that lead who didn't buy and then put them into a drip campaign and drip on them slowly until they become a client. I have to buy a vehicle. My vehicle is dying on me. And I've talked to a lot of dealers, only two dealers. And I'm talking about dozens of dealers just trying to figure out which way I'm going to go. Only two dealers actually have a drip campaign where they actually followed up with me. After I kind of said, you know, I'm just considering this, a lot of people just let me go. I never heard back from them again. I'm talking about over six weeks now. Two dealers have put me in a campaign, and they send me a little email once a week and say, hey, we know you're still shopping. If we can help you, let us know. Hey, here's a car that you may be interested in. Have you considered this? That's called drip conversion. And so people will say, well, marketing doesn't work because I spent $40,000 and I only got 5000 in return. No, that's not true. That's not true. Marketing does work. You got people in the door. It's your internal marketing systems which are not working. So the question that I'm trying to answer here, is marketing worth it? Simply, yeah, it is. Why is it the small business owners then think that marketing is not worth it? I can tell you why. It's because we are the jack of all trades in our business. We're running nonstop. And many times the systems that we need to have built aren't effective. So now how does all that work to drive the value of our company? There will come a day if you're trying to sell your company where the buyer is going to be interested in the marketing that you've done to come to the success level that you're at. A marketing budget, a marketing plan, every aspect of marketing will help you drive the intangible value of your company up if you can show them, here are the campaigns we've done, here are the campaigns we've not done. Because it shows the potential buyer opportunities. Think about it this way. Apple is just rolling out some new phones. I was looking at that the other day. Samsung just rolled out the Note 9. I have the Note 8. And I can almost bet money that Samsung and Apple have every one of their marketing concepts that they have utilized stored in a data file. They're a best-in-class company. Both of those are. If you're trying to build a best-in-class company to a high value where your multiple is moved up, as we talked about in last episodes, then you have to build a marketing plan. You have to have a consistent marketing budget. You have to quantify the results of your dollar spend so that you can show the potential buyer, here's what worked, here's what didn't work, here's our data research, here's our market research, here is our budget, here's our conversion systems. Everything's there. You're trying to build a best-in-class company. So does marketing work? Yeah, it does. And if I've totally confused you at this point, you say, Justin, this is way too much. I'm just going to hire a marketing firm. How do you know now you're not being sold? <laughs> a good question. This is why it's maybe time for you to talk to your value growth advisor. If you don't have one, reach out to us. We can help you. And with that, guys, thank you for listening to it on Financially Simple Podcast. Hey, go check out the blog, financiallysimple.com. Sign up for the newsletter. I actually have an article on marketing that we're going to be sending out. I think it's like next three weeks. I don't remember what I saw that coming up. Check it out. It's the best writing I do. If you like the podcast, hey, share it with a friend. And please leave us a review. Give us a thumbs up. We're creating some trend. We're making some headway with this content. I'm excited. You know, like I say every week, life is hard. It is. Life is great. Life is outstanding and life can be frustrating. Money doesn't have to be any of these things. Let's continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Y'all go out and create a great day. You have been listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. The information in this show is for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Instead, seek help from a competent financial advisor. Justin Goodbread, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor.